Hello everyone and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Dean Blevins. It's been a roller coaster for the Cowboys the last seven days. Coach, a major win over Missouri and then a tough loss at Nebraska last night. I think you described it well, a roller coaster, because we probably played our finest game of the year against the University of Missouri last Sunday afternoon when we uh, defeated them by 23 points. And uh, we very well could have played our poorest game of the year last night up in Lincoln, Nebraska. When you don't, do not shoot the ball well, and you don't play well, and you play on the road before 14,500 people against a good basketball team, you're in trouble. And uh, we never could get ahead of Nebraska last night to really put any pressure on them. But tough loss, but uh, you know, that streak had to end sometime. You were right, a couple of weeks ago I asked you about teams going undefeated. You said, no, we won't do it, and Duke won't do it. And, and Duke nabbed last night as well. Well, that was a strange night. I don't think the moon was right because there were a lot of good teams got beat last evening. I'm not sure how many in the uh, top 20 were defeated, but several of them. But Duke did go down to North Carolina, and, and that's not really a big upset because that's such a fierce rivalry. It's a conference game, and when you get to conference play, uh, everybody plays with a, a lot of intensity. All right, stay with us. Lots of great highlights, Coach's Corner, Play of the Week, and talk with the coach. We'll do all that right after we do this. Stay with us. Welcome back to the program. We start out with the good highlights. Oklahoma State ranked number three in the nation, taking on, I guess, number two in the nation. Nope, make that number three when you played Missouri, who was number eight. Those, that's the first time in Gallagher Iba Arena two top ten teams played, Coach. It's been a long time, a lot of excitement. The fans were certainly ready for the game, and I hope they're the same way this Saturday afternoon against University of Kansas when they come to Gallagher Iba Arena. Big key in this ball game. Could we uh, slow Peeler down? You're not going to shut him out, the great guard from Missouri, and we did that. But our team was very much alive, very active. You can see it both ends of the floor. Here's a great shot of team defense. We're going to take a look at that later in the show. Defense uh, takes the ball away from Peeler. Good transition. Leads to a three-point shot by Corey Williams at the other end. And when you're playing well defensively and playing smart, have the home crowd and knock down the threes, that you're going to win most of the time. That's correct. Another three-point shot by Sean in the corner. We try to utilize the, the uh, tray as much as we can, and in this ball game we were able to. Last night we didn't shoot very well from three-point range. Good penetrating play by Darwin Alexander. The defense forced to help play and dished it off today. It was Dell Harris who's with the Milwaukee Bucks, former head coach there. A lot of pro scouts to watch this ball game. To watch both Houston, I guess, and, and, and Peeler. That's correct. Another good example where you break the defense down, kick it back out for the three-point shot. Derwin converted. Watch this play. The pass was made by Sean, and it wasn't really right on the, on the mark, but uh, Byron rose and caught it one-handed and, and stuffed it through, and we're going to take another look at that later in the show. I think that means it was loud, Coach. It was a pretty loud Saturday, pretty loud. Sunday. Good example of attacking the zone. We went down the baseline, forced help, part of Hatcher, and Dave was converted. Good hustle player here, covered the weak side board well, and Byron Houston had a putback. Missouri played zone a lot in this ball game, and we did a good job of attacking it much better than we did last evening up in Lincoln. You don't shoot the ball well from the perimeter against zone, so your offense is not going to look very good. Great hands inside. Well, Brian Reeves does have good hands, and he's made a lot of progress. The last four games, he's played very consistent, scored in double figures in all four games. Corey Williams led us this ball game with 22 points and uh, played one of the best games, I guess, since he has come to Oklahoma State. That's uh, frosting on the cake right there. That's late in the ball game, and Darren Alexander hit the three. And it was a route, the final 84-61. And after that ball game on Monday, the rankings come out and you jump up to number two. So then you head to uh, Lincoln, rank number two in the country. Well, I, I said it uh, last week, I'll say it again. We are not the second best team in the country. And that was certainly proven last night uh, up in Lincoln. But we are a good basketball team. And sometimes when you lose a game, you learn a lot from it. You try to correct those mistakes and you, you start again. And, and it's better to lose right now and have teams expose weaknesses that we have so that we can get, get them corrected before we get into March. That's, when it's all, that's what it's all about. And just as your crowd was into the Missouri game up at the Bob Devaney Center, let's take a look at some of the highlights. The crowd up there was very loud as well. Well, Danny Nee and his staff and the whole school had set a trap for us. You know, uh, 
when you beat a team that's as highly ranked as our ball club, well, uh, it means a lot to them. And they needed a win because uh, they had let a game escape uh, a week earlier to the University of Oklahoma. We start out early. They're playing a zone, and uh, Darwin hit the three-point play. Nice penetrating dribble. Dish off to uh, Bryant Reeves, and we're up 5-0. to zero. It looked like uh, we were in good good position. We had uh, put the crowd back down in the seats. Coach, did they do anything with their zone defense that you had not seen? No, not really. I, the, the zone was a good zone, but uh, we just did, weren't as aggressive, didn't attack it as well, and didn't shoot well. There's a three-point shot by uh, Sean at the top of the circle. Uh, our three best perimeter shooters, uh, Darwin, Corey, and, and Sean, went 11 for 36, and that's not going to win on the road. It's not going to win at home very often. Defense uh, got us the ball there, and we were able to convert. Try to overload the zone, go inside. Byron misses his shot, but uh, Randy Davis uh, comes down the baseline and uh, gets a good stuff and puts it back. We're down 36 to 34 at halftime. And the first time all year, I guess you've trailed that half. Well, that's not a good omen. I'd rather be ahead all the time. But on the road, it's very, very important because in a game like this, as a game wears on, the team gains confidence, the crowd gains confidence, and you could almost see what was happening. Cowboys shoot 38% uh, for the game, and this is only the second time all year a team has shot better than 50% against you, Coach. Nebraska shoots 52%. Well, our defense wasn't as good as it has been, and uh, uh, when you shoot 37, 38% as we did, and 59% at the free throw line, and, and uh, not execute any better than we did, we're, you're going to get beat, although there's late in the game. You can see that pretty well describes the situation. Uh, we were only four down with about five to go, and really we're in striking distance, but just never could get over the hump, and finally had to foul there at the, at the end of the game to try to play catch up, and, and they hit every free throw, 21 out of 25, wow. and they're the worst free throw shooting team in the Big Eight. It seemed like late in the ball game, Byron Houston, Houston was not much of a factor offensively. Well, we didn't get the ball to him enough. Uh, uh, he only scored, I believe, two points in the last 19 minutes of the game. Their defense had something to do with it, but our inability to get the ball to him, and, and that's our fault uh, as a coaching staff and, and as his teammates. We should have gotten the ball to him. Maybe Byron wasn't working as hard as he needed to, but uh, he was open several times when I reviewed the film, and we just didn't deliver the basketball to him. All right, the Nebraska game's history. Enough of that. We'll look forward to Kansas and some other thoughts after this. Come back and join us. Coach, our play of the week from the Missouri game. This is what we call secondary break and uh, where you set a back screen on the man at the high post area there. And that's Byron Houston. We'll take another look at it. Great uh, pass by Sean. A little high, but Byron displays his great athletic talent, seizes the ball one-handed and flushes it down. Everybody likes that kind of a play. Well, a lot of people see that and they say, why don't they do that more often? What all has to take place for that play to be able to be successful? Well, you have to have a good passer. You have to have a good catcher. And also you have to have someone that uh, sets a screen to break him free. It's a matter of timing. Uh, we, we try to run several plays like that. And when they work, they are a beautiful thing to see. And sometimes they don't work. You've had some great athletes. Uh, how high up on the list is Byron Houston rank with some of the others and being able to do that? I have been very privileged through the years to have some great athletes and some great basketball players. And he is in that elite class. And he can uh, jump off the floor. You know, oftentimes you hear the, the comment, how tall is he? in basketball. It isn't how tall you are, it's how tall you play, and part of that is how, how high can you get off the ground. We'll take a 30-second timeout, and we come back, we'll show you Coach's Corner. Stay with us. Coach's Corner, always fun. Coach Sutton recognized as a wonderful teacher of the game, and help and team defense, uh, one of your fortes, Coach. Well, our defense has carried us to our 21 a record. Uh, I learned a long time ago, you better play good, solid defense if you're going to be a consistent winner. Learned that from football people, from other people that coach team sports, and certainly learned it from my mentor, Henry Iba, here at Oklahoma State. Uh, here's a good example of what we call team defense. Anthony Peeler is in there trying to post up. Uh, Corey Williams is covering him, and we have a rule. When that ball goes inside, let's converge. And that's exactly what we did there. Four guys surrounded him forced the turnover, and of course at the other end of the floor we're able to convert on a three-point shot. And we'll take another look at it in slow motion. And you can see Corey's trying to keep the ball out of there, but there comes come his teammates to give him some assistance. And they surround him and there's no place to go for Peeler. Uh, in that ball game, 
Corey Williams received a lot of uh, oh, oh, praise on how well he covered him, but Cornell Hatcher had him part of the time. And there's an example. One guy doesn't shut another player out by himself. you got to have help from his teammates, and that certainly was true in the game against Missouri with Peeler. We've heard a lot about this rule of verticality. Was that an example of it where your, your men have their arms straight up? That's what we try to uh, tell our players. When you have a person in trouble like that, don't reach in and foul him. Keep your arm straight up, and if he goes up and comes into you, then it's a foul on the offense. Now, sometimes those guys in the striped shirts don't call it that way. <laughs> Coach, time to regroup. You have talked a lot about uh, the Big 8 season is real important, but you want to be peaking toward uh, the end of regular, uh, regular season play and into postseason play. It's important for your group right now to regroup with a big game coming up Saturday. No doubt about that. I'm sure everyone in the Big 8 will be cheering for us to defeat the Jayhawks uh, Saturday afternoon because if they are able to escape with a victory here, it would seem to me it's going to be very hard for anyone to catch them. Uh, winning a league championship is always important. It used to be much more important than now because uh, a few years ago only the league champion got to go to the NCAA tournament. Now since they've expanded the field to 64, you have uh, at-large teams that will be able to get in. So. Maybe you need to be peaking in March, but still winning a Big 8 championship is one of our goals, and we know that if we are going to win, we better beat the uh, University of Kansas Saturday afternoon. A lot of people like to call games must-wins. Your counterpart in football, Pat Jones, says there aren't very many things you must do. Breathing is one of them. Do you believe in must-wins, and is this one of them? Uh, well, I think it's a very important uh, game for us uh, from the standpoint uh, when you win a league championship, you must be able, and I must is the word there, be able to win most of them at home and when you're playing uh, the top contender like the University of Kansas uh, you have a much better chance of winning the conference by winning here and then you have a chance to go back up to a very pleasant place like Allen Fieldhouse and try to sweep the series and that's hard to do but uh, it's a very very important game for us always more pressure on the home team to win uh, than there is when you're on the road. All right, we will talk more about the Kansas-Oklahoma State game coming up. We'll take a break and come back and look at the Big 8 standings and the schedule around the conference. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. The coach and I were just talking. The Big 8 conference could have up to six teams in the NCAA tournament. And coach, let's take a look at the standings as they are at this moment. Kansas, of course, on top at 5-0 and and 17-1 and for the year. Kansas is, uh, in my opinion, for real. Uh, last year, they went all the way to the championship game of the NCAA. I, I think this ball club potentially is a better team, and they certainly are developing into an outstanding ball club at the present time. We'll have a real challenge Saturday afternoon. We'll talk more about that. Of course, we're in second. Missouri uh, has a big game this weekend down at Norman with uh, the University of Oklahoma. Nebraska is in the middle of the pack. Iowa State, Oklahoma, Kansas State. Colorado won a big game last evening. Out in Boulder, they beat the uh, University of Oklahoma in overtime. So uh, the ball game with Kansas is very, very big. Let's take a look at the schedule coming up for the, the week ahead of us, Saturday, February the 8th. Of course, the big game, Kansas at Oklahoma State at 3 p.m., Nebraska at Kansas State, and on Sunday, Coach, another big one, Missouri at Oklahoma. Well, that is a big ball game, but they're all big uh, at this point. And like you said, uh, at this stage of the season, if they had the NCAA tournament today, I believe there would be six teams that would come out of the Big 8. Uh, what happens for, during the next month will determine that. But Colorado's at Iowa State Monday night. And also on Wednesday, February the 12th, Oklahoma State at Colorado, Iowa State at Kansas, and Kansas State at Missouri. We take our uh, biggest road trip of the year uh, this next week. Uh, we go to Colorado on Wednesday and then on up to Iowa State on Saturday. Two big games, but right now we're focusing on, on the Jayhawks. Coach, time to continue our series on the history of basketball. We've had a lot of fun the last few weeks. This week... Is that you in one of those shots? You've, you've seen a lot of those styles, haven't you? I, you? Styles have changed even since you were playing basketball, right. but uh, basketball has made remarkable progress in 100 years. And when I talk to some of those old timers and they tell me about some of those stories, how they used to play with those old balls, like Ray Meyer last week was talking about that ball that wouldn't even run, I mean, wouldn't even roll properly on the floor. I've seen some of those basketballs. And the uniforms even have changed from 1978. We were looking at the uh, all the finals of the uh, NCAA in 78 because we had our Arkansas team there. I couldn't <laughs> believe the hairstyles and I couldn't believe the uniform style. So uh, basketball has made a lot of progress, not only on the court, but in other ways as well. All right, Coach, one of your least favorite subjects, 
Duke loses, Oklahoma State loses, the mass of people want to know who's number one. Well, had we been able to pull off a win up at Lincoln, as you said, in between breaks, there would have really been a lot of hoopla for the game Saturday afternoon between Kansas and Oklahoma State. There still will be because we, we are two of the best teams in the country and we both play in the same league. Uh, I don't know. Uh, polls, I'm going to say this one more time. <laughs> polls are for coaches. They're not for players or for, for, uh, or they're for the fans. They're not for coaches or players. Uh, I would think even if uh, Duke, uh, with their loss to North Carolina, and that's not a big upset because uh, that's such a fierce rivalry between the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils. Uh, and playing in Chapel Hill, that's, uh, that's a big game. And North Carolina is one of the top ten teams in college basketball. Uh, if they beat LSU Saturday, uh, and I think they will, although uh, uh, LSU, in my opinion, has the best player in college basketball in she Shaquille O'Neal, uh, they'll still be number one. Uh, what happens beyond that, I don't know. There are just so many good basketball teams. You know, when you look at Indiana and you look at Ohio State and you look at UCLA and you look at North Carolina, uh, there it's hard to pick anyone above Duke. Duke is the best team. If they played a series with anybody in college basketball, they're going to win. But there are a lot of other good teams that can beat Duke on a given night, and that was proven last evening. In terms of NCAA seeding, uh, the rankings, it's always good to be up there week after week. And although you don't like the polls, don't, won't you agree that you sure like being up near the top just for that national acclaim? If we were uh, where we are at the present time, and it was uh, just before the NCAA tournament committee was meeting in Kansas City, I would be uh, excited. I hope we can be there. We're going to have to do a lot of uh, homework between now and then. But the polls are important because the NCAA Selection Committee does take that in consideration. Game time Saturday, uh, 3 o'clock for the big Oklahoma State-Kansas game. Orange and black. Huh? I promised plug something? our young guns that <laughs> I would put this on. It is orange and black day Saturday, and they are encouraging all of our students, all of our uh, older fans to come in black and orange and almost rip the roof off of Gallagher Ive Arena. If there was ever a time that our basketball team needed the sixth man, it'll be Saturday afternoon against the Jayhawks. Running out of time, but Rex Walters, a very good player. They're deep. Scouting report quickly on Kansas. Deepest team in the league, and you mentioned Walters. He's the newcomer of the year as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's made a lot of difference in that ball club, but uh, it's hard to just concentrate on the inside uh, part of Kansas or the outside game. They're a complete basketball team. Good defense, solid fundamentally and they'll play hard, so it'll be a terrific ball game. Coach, thanks, and best of luck on Saturday. Thank you, Dean. For Eddie Sutton, I'm Dean Blevins. Thanks for watching. See you next week on The Eddie Sutton Show.